Hey my duck YouTube, welcome back to a new video with Rams fan YT. In today's video we're going to be looking at a very historic club who is back on the rise after some very horrid years down in the bottom tiers. This is Blackpool Football Club, I know they're technically in the Championship now, but last season they were in League One, that is why they are in this list. So this is episode three and let's get straight into it. Football developed in Blackpool by 1877, uh, when Victoria FC were founded as a church club with a ground in Quartz Street. This team disbanded a few years later, but some of its members are understood to have merged with old boys from St John's School to form a new club called Blackpool St John's. The two factions remain disunited, however, and on the 26th of July 1887, at a meeting in the Stanley Arms public house, the members resolved to wind up St John's and form a new club to represent the whole of the town. It was named Blackpool Football Club. The new club managed to win two pieces of silverware in its first season in existence. This is 1887-88 season. This is the Fylde Cup and the Lancashire Junior Cup. At the conclusion of the following 1888-89 season, Blackpool became founding members of the Lancashire League. In their first season of competition, the club finished fifth out of the 13 member clubs. They finished as runners-up over the following three seasons, to Bury twice and to Liverpool once, before winning the championship themselves on their fourth attempt. Blackpool's home at that point in time was Rakes Hall, also known as the Royal Palace Gardens, which was part of a large entertainment complex they included a theatre and a boating lake, amongst other attractions. This meant the club's average attendances were around the 2000 mark, making the club's formative years a financial success. After struggling to repeat the success of the 1893-94 season, the Blackpool board decided it was time to leave local football behind. So, on the 13th of May 1896, the club became a limited company and applied for entry to the Football League. Their application was successful, and for the club's debut season, 1896-97, they would rejoin the 16-team second division. Blackpool's first ever football league game took place on the 5th of September, 1896, at Lincoln City, which they lost 3-1 in front of around 1,500 spectators. For the 1897-98 campaign, the club played their home games at the Athletic Grounds, um, present-day present Stanley Park, if you know the area. They remained there for the first seven home games of the 1898-99 season, before returning to Rakes Hall for the remaining ten. After finishing third from bottom, the club were not re-elected at the end of the 1898-99 season, and spent the 1899-1900 term back in the Lancashire League. They finished third, and after the Football League's annual meeting on the 25th of May 1900, were permitted back into Division 2. It was during this season out of the league that Blackpool amalgated with local rival South Shore and moved to Bloomfield Road. During the 10 seasons that followed, Blackpool couldn't finish no higher than 12th place. The club's top goal scorers in the league included Bob Burkett at 10 goals in 1901, uh, Jordy Anderson, who had 12 goals in 1901 and 1902, and Bob Whittingham, who scored 13 in 1908-09. At the end of 1910-1911, the club found themselves in 7th place, thanks largely to Joe Clennell's haul of 18 goals. Goals. What's goals? <laughs> it was a case of as you were, however, for the four seasons leading up to the First World War, with the finishing positions of 14th, 20th, 16th and 10th. For the last of those seasons, Joe Lane netted 28 goals. The outbreak of the war forced the cancellation of league football for four years, during which time regional competitions were introduced. When normality resumed in 1919-1920, Blackpool had appointed their first full-time manager in the form of Bill Norman. Norman guided the club to fourth-place finishes in his first two league seasons in charge. He was installed as manager during the final interwar season, and with Lane again netting close to 30 goals in the former. 
The club's form nosedived in the 1921-22 season with a finishing position on 19th, before bouncing back to a fifth place finish the following campaign. Harry Bedford, who had joined the club from Nottingham Forest, was the country's top league scorer with 32 goals to his name. Bedford repeated the feat the following season, this time under the watchful eye of new manager Frank Buckley, who replaced Bill Norman after his four years of service. Blackpool finished fourth in Buckley's first season in charge. The 1924-25 season was not as successful. A 17th place finish tempered only by only slightly by the clubs reaching the fourth round of the FA Cup for the first time, a single goal defeat at fellow Lancastrians Blackburn Rovers ended the Seasiders' run. Buckley guided Blackpool to two top ten finishes in his final two seasons as manager, with Billy Tremelings from 30 goals in the latter helping considerably, before he left to take the helm at Wolverhampton Wanderers. Buckley's replacement was Sidney Beaumont, who took charge for the, two, for the 1927-28 season, but he only lasted until the spring after the club finished in 19th position. Harry Evans was installed as the new Blackpool manager in an honorary capacity for the 1928-29 campaign. Due in no small part to Jimmy Hampson's 40 goals, the club finished 8th. In his second season, Evans guided Blackpool to the Division 2 Championship, their only championship to date, finishing ahead of promotion rivals Chelsea and Oldham Athletic by three and four points respectively. Hampson had bagged 45 of the club's 98 league goals. Blackpool only lasted three seasons in the first division. Two third bottom finishes were followed by a last place finish and the club returned to the second division. The club's relegation prompted the Blackpool board to install a recognised manager and they opted for Sandy McFarlane. McFarlane uh, occupied the Bloomfield Road hot seat for just two seasons, in which the club finished 11th and 4th. McFarlane's final season, 1933-34, no, 34-35, sorry, marked Jimmy Hampson's 8th successive and final season as Blackpool's top league scorer. Joe Smith was appointed Blackpool's sixth manager in August 1935, a role in which he remained for the next 23, many, 23 years. The club finished 10th in Smith's first season, with Bobby Finan taking over from Hampson as top scorer with 34 goals. It was Smith's second season in charge, however, that marked the starting point of the success to come. Blackpool finished the 1936-37 season as runners-up in the second division to Leicester City and were promoted back to the first division. Two seasons of Division I football were played before the Second World War intervened. Blackpool sat atop of the table at the time of the abandonment occurring. Regional competitions were implemented again between 1939 and 1945, and for the 1945-46 season, after war's conclusion, Blackpool spent one season in the Football League North. Scottish defender Hugh Kelly had arrived at Blackpool in 1943, as had fellow defender Tommy Garrett in 1942. Forward Stan Mortensen joined the club after war in 1946. Mortensen went on to become Blackpool's top league scorer, goal scorer for the next nine seasons, sharing the honour with Alan Brown in 1952-53. Stanley Matthews, who became a regular source of goals for Mortensen, joined Blackpool in 1947, as did centre-forward Jackie Muddy. Goalkeeper George Farm signed in 1948, followed by outside left Bill Perry in 1949. Kelly, Garrett, Matthews, Muddy, Farm and Perry would play with the club throughout the 1950s, the most successful decade in the club's history. Post-war Blackpool reached the FA Cup final on three occasions, losing to Manchester United in 1948 and Newcastle United three years later and winning it in 1953, captained by Harry Johnston. For the first and only time in the club's history, Four Blackpool players of Johnston, Matthews, Mortensen and debutant Ernie Taylor represented England in, his infamous, in the infamous 6-3 uh, defeat by Hungary at Wembley 
on the 25th of November 1953. Of the four, only Matthews would ever represent his country again. In 1955-56, and now captained by Kelly, Blackpool attained their highest ever finish in the Football League, runners-up to Manchester United. Despite losing their final four league games, it was a feat that could not be matched or bettered over the following two seasons. With fourth and seventh place finishes, and Smith left Blackpool as the club's most successful and longest serving manager. Smith was succeeded in May 1958 by Ron Suart, the first former tangerine to return to the club as manager. In his first season, he had led the club to eighth in the first division and the sixth round of the FA Cup. A 23-year-old Ray Charnley topped the club's goal-scoring chart with 20. In his first season as a professional, and he went on to repeat the feat for seven of the eight seasons that followed. The League Cup came into existence in 1960-61, and Blackpool were knocked out in the second round. This is the round in which they entered. The club's first division status came under threat, but they managed to avoid relegation by one point at the expense of Newcastle United. Local arch-rivals Preston North End were the other club to make the drop. In October 1961, Matthews, now aged 46, was sold back to Stoke City. Mid-table finishes in 1961-62 and 1962-63, and an appearance in the League Cup semi-finals during the former, were offset by another lowly finish of 18th in 1963-64, with Alan Ball top scoring with 13 goals. Much of the same ensued over the following two seasons, before relegation finally occurred in 1966-67. Blackpool finished bottom of the table, eight points adrift of fellow demotion victims Aston Villa. Stuart had resigned four months before the end of the season. His replacement was another former Blackpool player, Stan Mortensen. Mortensen picked up the pieces for the club's first season back in the second division in 30 years, guiding them to a third-place finish. They had gone into the final game of the season at Huddersfield Town, knowing that a win would likely secure a return to the first division. They won 3-1. But once the premature celebrations had ended, they discovered that their nearest rivals, Queen's Park Rangers, had scored a last-minute winner at Aston Villa. QPR were promoted by virtue of a better goal average of 1.86 to Blackpool's 1.65. At the end of the following 1968-69 campaign, the Blackpool board made the decision to sack Mortensen after just over two years in the job. The decision was met by fans with shock and anger, as Mortensen was a popular manager as he was a player. Les Shannon, uh, who spent the majority of his playing career with Blackpool's Lancashire rivals Burnley, was installed as manager for the 1969-70 season. In his first season, he succeeded where Mortensen had failed by guiding the club back to the top flight as runners-up behind Huddersfield Town. Their promotion had been sealed after the penultimate game of the season, a 3-0 victory at rivals Preston North End, courtesy of a Fred Pickering hat-trick. The result effectively relegated the hosts to the third division. As quickly as Shannon had taken Blackpool up, he saw them return whence they came. The club finished at the foot of the table and were relegated back to Division 2, along with Burnley. Before the season's conclusion, Shannon was briefly replaced in a caretaker manager capacity by Jimmy Meadows, who in turn was permanently replaced by Bob at Stokoe. Uh, on the 12th of June 1971, well over a month after the conclusion of the league season, Blackpool won the Anglo-Italian Cup with the 2-1 victory over Bologna in the final. This was achieved without the services of Jimmy Armfield, who retired in May after 17 years and 627 appearances for the club. Blackpool finished amongst the top 10 teams in the second division for six consecutive seasons. Under three different managers, Stokoe, Harry Potts and Alan Brown, Twice Blackpool narrowly missed out on promotion to Division 1 by two points in 1974 and 1977. In February 1978, midway through 1978 season, 
Brown's second season at the helm, Blackpool was seventh in the division. Having just beaten local rivals Blackburn Rovers 5-2 on the 6th of February 1978, Brown was sacked by chairman Binny Cartmel for personal reasons. The team won only one more game that season, which ended with their relegation to Division 3 for the first time in their history. On the 1st of April 1978, with six games to go, Blackpool were in 8th place, nine points off the third relegation slot. On the 25th of April, with one game to go, Blackpool were 14th, three points above Cardiff City in the relegation spot. Four days later, Blackpool completed their programme and were 16th with 37 points, two points clear of Leighton Orient in the third relegation spot. With a vastly superior goal difference, minus one, which was far better than fifth places, Blackburn Rovers, four better by the way, uh, at that point, all the teams below Blackpool still had games to play, apart from bottom place for Hull City. The bottom of the division table uh, read Blackpool in 16th with 42 points, uh, well, sorry, 37 points with 42 games played. 17th place of Charlton Athletic with 37 points and 41 games played. Millwall with 36 points with 41 games played. Cardiff City with 36 points with 40 games played. Leighton Orient in 20th. Uh, in the top relegation spot uh, with 35 points and 40 games played. Mansfield Town with 31 points with 41 games being played. And Hull City in 22nd place having 28 points and 42 games played. The only team of the team in the division with games to play was Notts County in 14th place with 38 points. After Millwall achieved safety by beating already relegated Mansfield Town, the three remaining fixtures were Cardiff City versus Notts County, Leighton Orient versus Charlton Athletic, and Cardiff City versus Leighton Orient. Only one combination from the, poss- the 27 possible outcomes of those three games would have resulted in all three teams getting more than 37 points and Blackpool being relegated. Inevitably, Cardiff City beat Notts County, Leighton Orient drew with Charlton, and in the final match, Leighton Orient, who at that point had only won one away game all season, and had lost six out of their previous eight away games with no wins, beat now safe Cardiff City, who had lost only two home games all season and had won six out of their previous seven home games with no defeats. Blackpool were relegated with 37 points, the seven teams above them all having 38, and were not to return to the second tier for 29 years. Bob Stokoe returned for a second stint as manager, for the 1978-79 campaign, at the end of which Blackpool finished mid-table, Stoko resigned during the summer. Stan Turnant became Blackpool's seventh manager in nine years, only to be replaced in February 1980 by Alan Ball, the popular former Blackpool midfielder who left the club for Everton 14 years earlier. Ball himself only lasted a year in the job and departed when the club were relegated to the league's basement division. Alan Brown had taken over from Ball in February 1981, and he remained in charge for the following 1981-82 term. Blackpool finished 12th in their first season in Division 4. However, unable to handle all the pressure of the job, Brown resigned during the close season. Sam Ellis took over from Brown in June 1982, three years after he finished his playing career with Watford. His first season saw Blackpool finish 21st, with Dave Bamber topping at the club's goal-scoring chart for the second consecutive season with 10 strikes. It was Ellis' third season, however, that had brought success to the club and that they had been looking for. Blackpool finished second behind Chesterfield and were back in Division 3. The club managed to finish in the top half of the table for their first three seasons in the third division but slipped 19th in Ellis's 7th and final season in charge. On the 17th of April 1986, the board of directors put the club on the market after councillors rejected plans to sell Bloomfield Road for a supermarket site in a £35 million redevelopment scheme. The club was then sold to Owen Oyston for £1. I can already hear the booze. For the 1989-90 season, 
Blackpool appointed Jimmy Mullen as manager. Mullen's reign only lasted 11 months, uh, however, and he left the club after their relegation back to Division 4. Graham Carr replaced Mullen, but his spell in the manager's seat was even shorter, just four months. He was sacked in November 1990, with Blackpool in 18th place. Carr's replacement was his assistant, Billy Eyre. Eyre guided the team to a fifth place finish and qualification for the playoffs. They lost only five of their 30 league games, but remained at the time of Eyre's appointment. The run included 13 consecutive home league wins and an eventual 24 game unbeaten run at Bloomfield Road. The run was extended to 15 consecutive home wins at the start of the 1991-92 campaign, which remains the club record. After beating Scunthorpe United in the two-legged semi-finals of the playoffs, Blackpool lost to Torquay United in the Wembley final, on penalties after the score was tied to all after regular and extra time. The following 1991-92 season finished with Blackpool in fourth place missing out on automatic promotion by one point, which meant another playoffs experience. This time they met Barnet in the semi-finals and won 2-1 in aggregate. They returned to Wembley, where they faced Gunthorpe United in the final. The team they knocked out of the playoffs 12 months earlier. Again, the score was tied at the end of regular and extra time, but Blackpool were victorious in the penalty shootout, and put their place in the new Division 2. Blackpool struggled in their first term back in the third tier of English football, but pulled to safety in 18th place by the end. In late 1993, they were as high as fourth, but tumbled down the table in the second half of the season to miss the drop by a whisker in 20th, avoiding relegation by virtue of a 4-1 victory over Leighton Orient on the final day of the season. Eyre was sacked in the summer of 1994 and was replaced by Sam Allardyce. Allardyce led Blackpool to a mid-table finish in his first season and saw the club knocked out of both competitions at the first hurdle. Tony Ellis was the club's top scorer with 17 league goals. The 1995-96 season saw Blackpool finish third and claim a place in the playoffs for the third time in six seasons. In the semi-finals, Blackpool travelled to Bradford City and won at 2-0. Three days later, they hosted the Yorkshiremen at Bloomfield Road and lost 3-0. Blackpool remained in Division 2 and Allardyce was sacked not long afterwards. In 1996, owner Oyston was convicted of a rape of a 16-year-old girl. Former Norwich City manager Gary Megson replaced Allardyce and attained a 7th place finish in his only season in charge. Nigel Worthington succeeded Megson in the summer of 1997, and the Northern Irishman's two full campaigns of hot speed, Blackpool finished 12th and 14th. Worthington resigned towards the end of the 1999-2000 season, and his seat was filled by the former Liverpool and England midfielder Steve McMahon. McMahon arrived too late to save the club from relegation to the third division at that time the fourth tier, after a 22nd place finish in the table. In his first full season in charge, Blackpool were promoted to Division 2 by winning the playoffs. The following season, the club received its then record outgoing transfer fee of £1.75 million from Southampton for Brett Ormerod, eclipsing the £600,000 QPR paid for Trevor Sinclair eight years earlier. They also gained the first of two Football League trophy wins in, 19, in, sorry, in 2002 as Blackpool beat Cambridge United 4-1 at the Millennium Stadium. Their second win was in 2004, this time beating Southend United 2-0 again in Cardiff. In the summer following the trophy win, McMahon resigned, believing he could not take the club any further with the budget he was still being offered. Colin Hendry became the new manager, but was replaced by Simon Grayson in November 2005 after an unsuccessful stint, which left Blackpool languishing just above the relegation zone of League One. In the 2006-07 FA Cup, 
Blackpool reached the fourth round for the first time in 17 years, after beating Aldershot Town 4-2 at Bloomfield Bloomfield Road, but were knocked out by Norwich City 3-2 after a replay at Carrow Road. They finished in third place and qualified for the playoffs, and as top scorers in League One with 76 goals, after beating Oldham Athletics 5-2 on aggregate in the semi-final, they met Yeovil Town in the final at the New Wembley Stadium. Their first appearance at England's National Stadium in 15 years. Blackpool won 2-0, a club record 10th consecutive victory, and were promoted to the Championship in their 100th overall season in the Football League. The promotion marked their return to English football second tier for the first time in 29 years. Blackpool knocked Premier League side Derby County out of the League Cup at the second round stage on the 28th of August 2007. The match ended one all after 90 minutes and two all after extra time. The Seasiders won the resulting penalty shootout 7-6. On the 25th of September, Blackpool beat Southend United 2-1 after extra time. <coughs> oh. To reach the fourth round for the first time in 35 years. They were drawn away to Premiership side Tottenham Hotspur in the last 16, a match they lost 2-0. Tottenham went on to win the competition. Blackpool finished the 2007-8 season in 19th place, escaping relegation by two points and ensuring their safety in a one-all draw with Watford on the final day of the championship season. On the 23rd of December 2008, Simon Grayson left the club to join League One club at Leeds United after just three years in charge at Bloomfield Road. Under the guidance of Grayson's assistant Tony Parks in a caretaker manager capacity, Blackpool finished the 2008-9 campaign in 16th place. Parks left the club on the 18th of May 2009 after a meeting with chairman Carl Easton about finances. On the 21st of May 2009, Ian Holloway was appointed as manager, signing a one-year contract with the club with an option of a further year. On the 31st of July, it was announced that club president Valeriges Belocons, I think, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, was setting up a new transfer fund into which he was adding a considerable amount to invest in new players identified by Holloway. Four days later, Blackpool broke their transfer record by signing Charlie Adam from Scottish Champions Rangers for £500,000 topping the £275,000 paid to Millwall for Chris Malkin in 1996. Blackpool finished the 2009-10 regular season in sixth place in the Championship, but their highest finish in the football, this is their highest football league finish since 1970-71, and claimed a spot in the playoffs. On the 20th of May to the 2nd of May, sorry, 2010, the 57th anniversary of Blackpool's FA Cup final victory, Blackpool hosted Bristol City for the final league game of the season. They needed to match or better Swansea City's result in their match at home to Doncaster Rovers. Both matches ended in draws, with Swansea's Lee Tundle, or Lee Trundle rather, having a late goal disallowed for handball, which meant Blackpool secured for remaining playoff place. On the 8th of May, Blackpool beat Nottingham Forest 2-1 at Bloomfield Road in the semi-final first leg. Three days later, they beat them again 4-3, meaning it was 6-4 in aggregate at the city ground in the second leg, therefore to progress into the final against Cardiff. The result meant Blackpool beaten Forest in all four of the club's meetings in 2009-10 season. Thank you very much, Blackpool. Round of applause to you. Blackpool defeated Cardiff City 3-2 on the 22nd of May in the Championship Playoff Final at Wembley Stadium to earn promotion to the Premier League. It was Blackpool's debut appearance in the Premier League in its 18-year existence and their first appearance in England's ish football's top flight in 39 years. Blackpool had now uniquely been promoted through all three tiers of the Football League via the playoff system. Furthermore, they won all nine playoff games they were involved in during the 10 seasons between 2001 and 2010. The fixture was dubbed the richest game in football because the victorious club would receive a £90 million windfall. 
It was more than double the £36 million pounds that the winners of the Champions League received. On the 24th of May, a promotion parade was held along Blackpool's promenade for the club's personnel, who uh, travelled on an open-top double-decker bus from Gin Square down to Golden Mile to the Waterloo headland. The police estimated that about 100,000 people lined the route. At the headland, the manager and squad took to the stage to address the Gavin Mass crowd. This is the most unbelievable moment of my life, said Ian Holloway. I've jumped on the best ride of my life and I don't want to go home. In their first ever Premier League match on the 14th of August 2010, Blackpool defeated Wigan Athletic 4-0 at the DW Stadium. The results saw the Seasiders at the top of the entire football English Football League pyramid. Bit misleading, that really. Until Chelsea's 6 0 victory over West Bromwich Albion later in the day. <laughs> it was the first time they had been in such a position since they won their opening game of the 1957 58 top flight campaign. The initial fixture list had the game being played at Bloomfield Road, but the Premier League allowed the fixture to be reversed because construction work on Bloomfield Road's east stand had not been completed in time. On the 27th of January 2011, the Premier League fined Blackpool £25,000 for fielding what they believed to be a weakened team against Aston Villa on the 10th of November. Ian Holloway, who initially threatened to resign if punishment was dealt, had made 10 changes to the team for the fixture. The club had 14 days to appeal against the decision, but chose not to, with Carl Oyston saying that if the punishment was upheld, there was a threat of a points deduction and an increase in the fine. On the 22nd of May 2011, after exactly 365 days from their promotion, Blackpool were relegated back to the Championship after losing 4-2 at Champions Manchester United on the final day of the season. Their results elsewhere also impacted the final league standings. Despite predictions that they wouldn't get 10 points, Blackpool took 39 from their 38 games including home and away victories over Liverpool, consecutive away wins at Stoke City and Sunderland, and a home victory over Tottenham Hotspur. Seven of their ten overall wins were obtained before the new year, and at the end of the 2010, they sat in eighth place. Now, their seven defeats in the opening eight fixtures of 2011 saw them drop down the table. The next match, a draw at home at Aston against Aston Villa left them in 15th, the lowest placing of the campaign to date. Another run of defeats, this time 5 and 6, put them in the relegation zone for the first time. They climbed out for bottom three at the expense of Wigan Athletic, with successive home draws against Newcastle United and Stoke City. Blackpool dropped back into the relegation zone after conceding a late equaliser to draw at Tottenham, switching places with Wolves. They were level on points with Wigan, and three ahead of bottom club West Ham United. A victory, their first in three months over Bolton Wanderers, in their penultimate league fixture, was not enough to change the position, as Wolves won at Sunderland. Blackpool went to Old Trafford for the final match, and were leading 2-1, 12 minutes into the second half. But Manchester United, who were crowned champions a week earlier, took control and won 4-2 to condemn 19th place Blackpool to relegation, along with Birmingham City and West Ham United. In July 2011, Blackpool smashed their outgoing transfer record when Charlie Adams signed for Liverpool in a £7 million deal. A portion of these funds was used to bring former Scotland Rangers, Blackburn Rovers and Birmingham captain Barry Ferguson to Bloomfield Road, where he once again assumed the armband. On the 9th of May 2012, Blackpool secured their place in the Championship playoff final in their second consecutive season, in the division after beating Birmingham City 3 2 on aggregate in the semi finals. They met West Ham United in the final at Wembley on the 19th of May, losing 2 1, conceding a last gasp at goal to the Hammers at Ricardo Vazte, their first playoff final reversal in 21 years. On the 3rd of November 2012, Ian Holloway decided to leave Blackpool after accepting an offer from fellow Championship side Crystal Palace to be that manager. He was replaced four days later by Michael Appleton, who left the League One side Portsmouth to take up the position. 
However, after being in charge for just two months, Appleton left the Lancashire neighbours Blackburn Rovers, becoming the shortest serving manager in Blackpool's history. On the 18th of February, after just a month without an appointment, the club made former England captain Paul Ince their third manager of the campaign. It was under Ince that the club made their best ever start to a league season. Their victory at AFC Bournemouth on the 14th of September 2013 gave them 16 points out of a possible 18. The sequence of results was two wins, a draw and three win, uh, t- and three wins. This was countered by a run of nine defeats in 10 games, which resulted in Ints being sacked on the 21st of January 2014, 11 months into his tenure. Barry Ferguson was named caretaker manager upon Ints' dismissal, and of Ferguson's 20 league games in charge, Blackpool won just three and finished the 2013-14 season in 20th place. On the 11th of June 2014, almost five months after Paul Ince's dismissal, the club appointed Belgian Jose Riga as manager. He was Blackpool's first overseas manager. Prior to the start of the 2014-15 season, Blackpool suffered a major crisis with some 27 players leaving the club just two weeks before the season started. The club had only eight, field, eight outfield players and no goalkeeper. Riga was able to assemble a squad in time for Blackpool's first game against Nottingham Forest, but could still only name four substitutes instead of a permitted seven. Blackpool lost the match 2-0 on the 27th of October 2014 after 15 games in charge, Rigo was sacked and replaced by Lee Clark. On the 6th of April 2015, with six league fixtures remaining, Blackpool were relegated to League One. On the 2nd of May 2015, the final match for championship season against Huddersfield Town was abandoned in the 48th minute following an on-pitch protest by hundreds of Blackpool supporters regarding the actions and management style of the directors and owners. The Football League subsequently declared the result the nil-nil score line as it was at the time of the abandonment, which meant Blackpool finished the season with 26 points. Following the resignation of Lee Clark on the 9th of May 2015, Blackpool appointed Neil MacDonald as manager on the 2nd of June. In May 2016, after a second successive relegation occurred, which put Blackpool in the bottom tier of English professional football for the first time in 15 years, less than two weeks later, Neil McDonald was sacked as manager. He was replaced by Gary Bowyer, the club's eighth manager in three and a half years. In late 2016, as the sexual abuse scandal developed, former Blackpool player Paul Stewart alleged he had been abused by Frank Roper, a coach associated with Blackpool in the 1980s. In May 2017, under Bowyer, or Bowyer, sorry, Blackpool won promotion to League One after beating Exeter City 2-1 at Wembley in the playoff final. The victory meant that Blackpool became the most successful side in English playoff history, winning their fifth final. On the 10th of November 2017, Blackpool was put up for sale by the Oyston family. The sale included the club itself and the properties division that owns Bloomfield Road Stadium. On the 2nd of February 2018, Owen Oyston relieved Carl Oyston as of his role as chairman and appointed his 32-year-old daughter, Natalie Christopher, in his place, just two weeks after appointing her to the club's board. Gary Bowyer resigned in uh, August 2018 after just two years in charge, after the first game of the season for undisclosed reasons. He is replaced with assistant Terry McPhillips as caretaker and manager. McPhillips was made the permanent manager a month later. On the 13th of February 2019, the football club was put into receivership by the High Court, which forced Owen Oyston to pay the ex-director Valerij Belacons some of the £25 million pounds he was owed. Oyston was removed from the board of the club by the receiver on the 25th of February 2019. The receiver was tasked with discharging some of Oyston's assets, as well as Blackpool Football Club Properties Limited, which owns the football club. The ruling could have resulted in the club being deducted 12 league points 
However, this was eventually ruled against by the EFL on the 11th of April 2019, of which I most hope that the same happens with Derby. On the 13th of June 2019, Simon Sadler was announced as the new owner of the club, officially ending the Eastern's 32-year tenure, purchasing a 96.2% stake. Sadler was born and raised in Blackpool and has worked in asset management in Hong Kong since 2007. He is the founder and chief investment officer of Sajantil, of Sajanti Capital Management. Terry McPhillips resigned as Blackpool manager on the 5th of July 2019, having informed the club's board that he had no long-term desire to be a manager. He was replaced by Simon Grayson, who returned for a second spell in charge. However, after a long run of defeats, he was sacked on the 12th of February 2020. Grayson's last game in charge was a 3-2 home loss to Ginningham. Liverpool's under-23s manager, Neil Critchley, was appointed head coach. The first such role for the club, as his replacement on the 2nd of March 2020. After a curtailed regular season due to COVID-19 pandemic in the United Kingdom, Blackpool finished the 2019-20 season in 13th place, after standings were amended to reflect a points-per-game ratio. At the end of the following campaign, Blackpool were promoted back to the second tier of English football after a six-year absence. After winning the 2021 EFL League One playoff final, it was Blackpool's sixth victory in a playoff final in eight such appearances. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you're new around here. I know that was a long one, but I hope you found it very much interesting. Uh, I've got the biggest... Uh, underachievers coming up in my next video on Friday who is doing uh, better than maybe they should be. and also a history of your club with Bolton Wanderers uh, I'm sure Fogden would be much delighted if he ever stumbles across him but goodbye for now